Happy New Year. By the time you're watching this, it's, it's probably Happy New Year. What, what year is it? It'll be 2024. 2024. So in this video, I'm going to show you some pro landscape photography secrets by showing you some of my best images from 2023. It's actually been a, a pretty good year for my landscape photography portfolio. So I'm going to go through all of my favorite shots and explain to you exactly how I put those shots together. And hopefully you'll learn something in this video. With it being a new year, um, I got a new year's resolution. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm now committed to, to losing some weight. I'm, I'm, I'm sick of this spare tractor tire. Uh, I am going to get in shape. And uh, to prove that to you, I'm not going to have any of these delicious snacks that Amanda's got. What's that? Bailey's. Bailey's chocolates. Yeah, I've never tried them. Hopefully they're terrible. Yeah, you know they won't be. Nobody eats chocolate like that. There was a shot in it. Was there? It's Bailey's. Was it a liquid shot? Yeah. I don't believe you. You'll never know. I'm just going to go without now. At least one of us is going to have a good time tonight. Mm -hmm. you, you can't just go through them all in one go, like space them out a little bit. Right, so I'm going to pull up these images and I'm going to show you my absolute favourite. Some of these are absolute corkers, they really are. First image from last winter, dead fall. So there's not too much to tell you about this image in terms of technique. It was pretty straightforward. I believe it was probably focus stacked. I tried a different arrangement of shutter speeds. Let me just look at the info, see what the shutter speed was on this. One sixth of a second. And a trick that I often use when I want to slow things down, because even though the, the day was getting on a little bit there, it was still quite bright and the sun just came out of the clouds a little bit and you could see it reflecting on that little bit of water right in the center of the frame. So it got kind of bright. I didn't have an ND, I just had my circular polarizer on. So on my camera, what I can do is I can go down to ISO 50 to just slow the shutter speed, kind of force a long exposure, drag the shutter a little bit. And that's what got me that, uh, that lovely one six of a second exposure there. So that's, that's a trick that the pros use quite a lot. If they don't have an ND, they'll use a CPL to make it a little bit darker, cut down on some reflexion and then Use that fake ND, which is that ISO 50 setting, and that will sometimes give you the shutter speed that you want. Do you remember that day? Yeah, it was freezing. Yeah, well, I was the one that was stood in the middle of the river, up to my nips. Yeah, I left you, and I walked away. You back. did, didn't you? It was only minus 15 Celsius. It was only deadly. It just wasn't too bad. It's terrible. What's that? This is shortbread. Hopefully it's disgusting. Yeah, it will be. Now is it? Mm, gross. <laughs> it's not, is it? It's disgusting. All right, this next image. I think this is probably my favorite image of the year, and it is Maelstrom. So th this image is one of those images where you've got a spectacular location, but the light's kind of crap, but I didn't care. I wasn't too worried about the light being kind of crap because I knew this type of subject matter works really well with a pretty dingy gray sky. And because it was blue hour, it had that lovely blue hue to it. Now, anyone who knows anything about photography can look at this shot and know that at the very least I've uh, exposure blended at least two or three frames because as you can see in the foreground there's a, there's a long exposure and I think I probably put together several shots all at different shutter speeds so the long exposure gives you as you know probably that that mushy water I usually prefer a bit of a faster shutter speed but it is blue hour so it's getting quite dark so I was kind of forced to shoot at those uh, those longer shutter speeds but you might be able to notice the wave that's going through the center of the frame and that was probably i'm going to guess about one eighth of a second so for that particular frame i would have cranked up the iso to probably something like iso 800 just to get that one frame with because i wanted one frame with the wave making its way into the scene 
And then of course, if you look into the background, you could see all of those birds there. Well, of course, you know, birds on a long exposure would, would just be a complete smudge if they even show up at all. So if you're wondering if I pasted the birds in, well, um, what's your next snack? Well, my next snack is actually for you. What is it? Just like your mother. Oh, I've got a couple of announcements to make. Do you? Yes. I've got two workshops coming up in 2024. What? In May, I've got Newfoundland with brilliant photographer called God Follett. He's a Newfoundlander. He knows all of the best locations. So we're gonna be there shooting seascapes and icebergs for six days and five nights. So if you're interested in the Newfoundland 2024 workshop, there's a link in the description for that. And then the other workshop that I'm gonna do is the Canadian Rockies in September, when the fall color should be kicking. I can't guarantee, but I'm gonna time it so that there's a chance we'll get gorgeous fall color. Again, link in the description. All right, this next image you have not seen here on YouTube, and this was called Turn Left at the Turtle. So this is one of the many, many shots that I managed to get on our last trip down to the bayou. And uh, there's a couple of vlogs at least coming from this location. And uh, it was such a productive trip. Absolutely loved it. Yeah, I was shooting at 112 millimeter from the canoe. And I think this one was probably on a tripod, let's have a look at the aperture. Which aperture was it? Yeah, F16. So I, I would have been shooting that one from the tripod. And uh, the trick with, with these types of shots is to just try and frame up a shot, just compose a shot that doesn't have any white sky in it and a, and a nice reflexion. And even though it was, was fairly quiet, there was probably, what, five other canoes? Yeah. And everyone's dead respectful. Everyone just kind of creeps through the water and doesn't cause a huge wave. It was still quite tricky. So I was on the tripod, probably hanging out the side of the canoe. And that was how I was able to shoot at F16 and get that fairly long exposure, one third of a second. And the only thing that was tricky really was, was trying not to get all that Spanish moss that you can see hanging down off the branches. In the breeze, it would move. You could see some of it's at a slight diagonal. So because it was one third of a second, some of those were slightly blurred. But I, I was willing to accept that because at F16, everything is super sharp in this image. In terms of processing, there really wasn't much to do with that. I think I might have cloned out a few uh, ugly things that were floating around in the water there. But other than that, not much else to tell you. You like the white chocolate balls? I do like white chocolate. Dark chocolate's my favorite. Right, let's get on to the next image. Oh yeah. Oh. This one is called Floodlit. So this is probably one of the easiest images I have ever captured. This was just handheld, no tripod. It's with the Hasselblad X2D. Yeah, and it was one 320th of a second. So top tip there for you is if you want a sharp handheld image, you really need to shoot at quite a fast shutter speed. And it all, all depends on your focal length and uh, your aperture. But the goal is to try and get as, as fast a shot as you can. And that will negate any kind of vibration that, that's coming from you being handheld and not on a tripod. And then the other thing that I did, which was, was kind of beneficial to be shooting at such a, a fast shutter speed, it was very, very underexposed because I knew that those highlights that you can see up in the sky there, there would there'd be potential for those to be blown out. So I basically just exposed it for the highlights, meaning that most of the image was grossly underexposed, but that gave me that lovely one 320th of a second and then it was super sharp in the bright areas and I just lifted out those shadows and, it, and the, the quality is still there in the shadow areas, uh, but just don't look too closely. All right, this next image is another handheld shot with the Hasselblad X2D and this one is called Atomized. Atomized. 
And I think what I love about this shot is, other than it being super quick and easy to shoot, it's the mood. Anytime that I can get mountains in rain and you can see the sheets of rain pouring down there, I, I just absolutely love that, that moody kind of light. And as you can see, I've processed the image in such a way that it really sort of emphasizes that, that dingy, moody light. To me, this, this image really sort of captures the feeling of Glencoe and what it's like to be in that valley, particularly on a grim day, which is quite common <laughs> in Scotland. Um, technically, there's really not that much to, to tell you. I just set my autofocus focus point on that central mountain there at the very, very top, where you can see is the most amount of contrast in the image. F9, very sharp aperture on that lens and just shot that handheld. That was the best short bread we ever had that day, wasn't it? Helpful, really helpful. All right, now let's look at this next image. This is another one from Ireland. Donegal Didda. This was the day that Bernard Geraghty picked up a random poo bag from the back of somebody's car <laughs> and told me it was full of sand and that we could do a little gag with it, you know. And I believed him <laughs> like a complete idiot. Anyway, I learned a, a very good lesson there about uh, Bernard Geraghty is to don't believe a word that he says. Another story is a week later, I got bit by a dog because I followed a, a Google Maps pin that he'd sent me saying, oh, go to this spot, there's a really good shooting location and as soon as I got out I got attacked by five dogs. <laughs> One of them bit me and I had to spend the rest of the day in hospital getting it sorted out with a tetanus shot and all that. So uh, yeah thanks Bernard, we had a brilliant day that day didn't we? But he didn't really know that did he? No I'm sure he didn't. I'm sure he didn't know about that. And I borrowed Bernard's uh, 12 to 24 because it was a super wide scene. These sea stacks are massive. Oh, this was actually shot at 12 millimeter, which if you've ever used a 12 millimeter lens before, that's like, that's like fish eye nonsense. And so what I had to do there, because I shot this at 12 millimeter, I had to distort the image a little bit to, to make it less curved. So if you look at the horizon line in the water there, I had to straighten that out and it took quite a bit of work. Um, just using a lens profile wasn't sufficient. So I had to use the uh, Photoshop warp tool to just straighten that a little bit. And in the end, I managed to get it really nice. What was one of your favorite things about Donegal? I'd have to say the Guinness. The Guinness. It was a bit of a problem, wasn't it? Yeah, right up there with the shortbread. Again, you know, I'm, I'm committed to uh, at least no Guinness for at least two or three months. Oh, look at this next image, Aww, eh? Oh, is that one of your favorites? Yeah, Handful of Happiness. Aww. So that was our um, early summer, late spring trip to New York State. What a beautiful state that is. Absolutely glorious. And we had to get up at, I think, five o'clock in the morning to get this shot because this walk that you can see here, this trail with the bridge in the background, is super busy, super popular. There's probably a thousand people or more per day that go through this, this canyon. So by getting up at 5 a.m. and arriving just after first light, we managed to have the whole place to ourselves for about, what, 20 minutes? Yeah. And then, and then, the people started to come in. Even that early, people were, were coming up, not just photographers either. Um, I shot this at an aperture of f1.8 because I wanted to get Amanda super sharp and the, the area just next to her, but then the background I wanted to blur out. And I didn't need uh, any kind of filters. I didn't need an ND filter or anything like that because it was so dim. There was hardly any light at all. Oh, that was one eighth of a second at f 1.8. One eighth of a second was just about the perfect shutter speed to get Amanda nice and frozen, but enough of a slow shutter speed that all of the water would be a little bit blurred. I may have actually done a semi-focus stack on that. So if you look at the wall just behind Amanda, I think I wanted a bit more 
of that in focus. So what I think I did, if memory serves me right, is after I got the shot of Amanda at f1.8, I probably stopped down to about f8, maybe f11, and took a much longer exposure that had more depth of field in it, so that some more of that rock face that you can see there just behind Amanda would have been in focus. And then I would have layered that image on top of the f1.8 and just masked in a little bit of that wall. Looking at it now, that is probably what I did. We, we had a good time there. That was, that was, that was happy days, wasn't yeah. it? Okay, the next shot, which some of you might remember from last winter, Belinda the Bobcat. Technically, not much to tell you about this shot. This was handheld with the 100 to 400, 333 millimeters. I don't know if that was in crop mode or not because I was actually only about 12 feet away from Belinda, the Bobcat. It was a magic moment. She let me get very close before she turned around and walked off. And uh, she's looking right down the barrel of the lens. I was just talking to her the whole time. There's a, there's a video from this entire adventure. But uh, yeah, single frame, no bracketing, no focus stacking, no time to do any of that kind of stuff. And I'm not a wildlife photographer, I'm a landscape photographer. But um, this was just a magical moment for me. And if, if you look at the right eye, there's some sort of either a cataract or an injury there that makes her right eye milky. I don't know what the story is there, but there's a story for sure. And I thought about cloning out those sticks that you could see in the foreground. And I thought, nah, I'm just gonna leave them in. And processing this image was a, a really quick and simple job. This is the kind of image that really anybody could shoot. It doesn't require much uh, technical ability other than selecting the right shutter speed, getting the right depth of field, getting everything sharp with your autofocus, back button focus, not overexposing because of those bright highlights. But the most difficult thing was the slow motion squat that I had to go into to get into position because I tried a squat earlier and it, I was too quick and it scared her off. So I had to do this really slow and I almost blew my knees out. Knees of cheese. Anyway, that was Belinda. What a, what a magic day that yeah, was. Yeah, that was your favorite day ever. I, I, just, I just want a pet bobcat. What's wrong with that? There's not, you just gotta catch one. All right, I'm just gonna leave you with two more because this has been dragging on a bit. <laughs> and, and these are from the, the trip to Texas. This one is called The Bouquet Holders. Right, so this one, this is actually hanging on our bathroom wall. We've got a print of this one hanging on our bathroom wall. So you will see a video where I capture these images coming up in the, in the new year. I don't know how many videos I'll get. I'm thinking at least two videos. This shot, I think, was probably shot handheld from the canoe because this was shallow depth of field. If I look at the EXIF, is it F5? Yeah, this is F5, 1 80th of a second. And I had to crank the ISO up to 250 so that I could get that 1 80th of a second, which was just, just about perfect to get everything sharp with those trees that you could see in the foreground. Beyond that, because of the shallow depth of field, it's, it's blurred. It's just those two trees in the foreground that are sharp. And, and that's what I wanted. Sometimes I want everything focused and, and lots of depth of field. Other times I want to isolate and have shallow depth of field and just focus on the main subject. And so in this case, it was this, this pair, this, this duo, this couple of trees. And I used autofocus, back button focus, and I focused on the leaves on that sort of green bouquet that you could see these two trees holding up. That was my focus point, which was perfect because I knew that everything past that would be a little bit soft and a little bit blurry. On this day, I think this was the first morning, right? So the water was quite clean. There wasn't much debris in the water. I didn't realize that that was the best it was gonna get. A few days after that, the wind picked up and blew lots of the needles off of the trees and then the water was just a mess and it really disrupted the reflexion. So this was one of the better reflexion days 
I just wish I'd milked it a bit more. But you never know, do you? And, and we, this was our first morning there. We'd arrived the day before, didn't really know where, where we were going, didn't really know the lay of the land. Now that we know this place quite well, we, we'll be better equipped to take advantage of things like that. Now, I, I asked about alligators, right? And um, the park people said, don't, don't worry about the alligators. They're not around. And I said, well, <clears throat> where are they then? I never got a clear answer where they were. If it was too cold. Well, that's what they said. They said, oh, the water's too cold. But So where are they then? Where do they go? Oh, they just kind of go up in the trees then. The trees that I kind of walked through to get to the other beaches. Anyway, I figured out after a couple of days that if you wanted to get sharp images of this place that weren't shallow depth of field, you really had to get out of your canoe and stand nipple deep in the water with hip waders on. And that takes us to the final shot, which you're gonna see in an upcoming video. This image is called Goodbye Salute. Well, the reason why I called that Goodbye Salute is because I'd shot this, this arrangement, this composition, or close enough to this composition several times over the sort of 10 days that we were there because the colors in the trees were constantly changing. When we first arrived, that tree you can see in the middle there was mostly green with little splashes of yellow. There was none of that orange that you can see. And as the week progressed, it became more and more colorful. It was just absolutely beautiful. The only downside was because of those winds that I told you about, as you can see in the foreground there, there's a lot of detritus in the water just kind of disrupting that reflexion. But I absolutely loved this composition. And as I said earlier in that, that earlier shot, the tricky thing with these comps is to try and get no sky in the frame. And it's more difficult when it comes to the reflection. So you may have the top of the frame perfectly framed up so that there's no white bits of sky creeping in. But quite often, depending on your focal length, the bottom of the frame will reflect those white gaps in the canopy. And so it's, it's, it's a tricky thing. And like I said earlier, I had to jump out of the canoe. So if you ever go to the bayou and you want to get shots like these, there are plenty of people that stay in the canoe and get a sharp image, even if they want shallow depth of field. But for me, I found that with the light and how dim it was, I, I had to do fairly long exposures. So for that, I needed the tripod. And it was quite tricky because I'm, I'm there in the water and I'm standing on kind of like a silty surface, as is the tripod. And so it's, it's gradually sinking. And so I think I shot this at F16. So that gave me lots of depth of field. It gave me lots of sharpness. And there was just enough light that I was able to get the shot, even though the, <laughs> the camera was sinking a little bit. And because of the arrangement of the trees, like if you look at the tree on the right there, that's actually fairly close to me. It was close enough that I still had to focus stack this image, even at F16, because of the difference between the closest foreground tree and the furthest trees in the background. I wanted everything sharp, so I did have to focus stack this. But I didn't really have to expose your bracket because it wasn't really that much in the way of dynamic range. So it really wasn't that difficult to put together. So there you go, those are my favorite shots from 2023. I hope you enjoyed them too. Do you want a hot chocolate? Yeah, go on, no sugar though. Yeah, just a, a no sugar hot chocolate. That's healthy, isn't it? I can't help myself. <laughs> Happy New Year. <laughs> <laughs>